I'm coming up out of the crater of a volcano, an island, Rangitoto, about 20 minutes boat ride out from Auckland in New Zealand. Now, if we'd been here 750 years ago, we would have seen something very spectacular because molten rock at that point pushed itself up through the Earth's surface and caused an explosion here. And so the volcano began its life. It began as a fountain of fire with molten rock thrown up into the air. Some of the drops of molten rock actually solidified as they tumbled through the air to form these rounded rocks called bombs. If you have a look at this one in particular, that probably tumbled in that direction there because it has little protrusions called tangs which are shown on either side. And then it hit the ground and they've been laying there ever since. Well, the volcano continued to erupt until about 200 years ago. Then it stopped. It's dormant at this stage. But it's not all bombs around here. Some of the material on the ground, as you can see, is very fine. It's called sinter, and this is on the edge of the crater. The amount of sintery ash that poured out of Rangitoto was absolutely extraordinary. It was flung out of the crater, up into the air, and down again to make this enormous rim all the way around the volcano. It's called the sinter cone, and this is a cross section. You can see the sinter lying in layer on layer, and it's a bright red because it's full of iron which became oxidized in the process. But as large as this output was, of the sinter from the crater, it was only one stage of the formation of this volcanic island. Molten rock or lava flowed from the side of the volcano. As it did so, it cooled down. And as it cooled down, of course, it changed from liquid rock into solid rock. Some of this happened on the side of the volcano. In some places, it didn't happen until it actually hit the cold water, the ocean. Now, the rock that's formed is a very dark rock, almost black, dark grey. It's called basalt. And if you look at it carefully, you notice there are holes in it. Why? Because the molten rock contains gases trapped in it. And when that changed into solid rock, as Rangitoto was forming, those gases escaped and air bubbles are left behind. This means the basalt is very porous. This whole process kept on occurring for hundreds of years. Layer upon layer of lava pushing down, some above, some below. Ridges of lava were formed, fields of lava, rivers of lava. But all of this rock that's formed from that lava, basalt, is porous, which means the water seeps right down through it when it rains. But small pockets of water are caught within the rocks. The moisture clinging in the crevices of that basalt is enough, just enough, to start the processes of vegetation, which eventually have covered almost all of this island. You see, if I lift up a bit of basalt, it's only black underneath, just bare rock. But on the top, you find this grey lichen, which covers almost all of its surface. Lichen is really a very primitive plant form, but it does act as a bit of a sponge. It holds the water, so it provides a very good moist bed into which other seeds can land and begin growing. Now, one of these plants that produces seeds is extremely important here. It's the pahutakawa. There it is, the New Zealand Christmas tree. Called that because it has beautiful red flowers that come out at around about Christmas time every year. But that produces absolutely masses of tiny little seeds which blow in the wind and have blown here all the way across from the mainland of New Zealand. Blowing as they do, settling in the spongy lichen and feeding on the moisture there, they are able to germinate and grow into trees. In fact, you can see one over there doing what they do here, growing apparently out of the bare rock. Well, they can do very well and they can become very large, forming a sort of umbrella. And of course, from the umbrella, from those branches, drop down the dead leaves and bits of bark and all sorts of rubbish that can rot on the ground and feed other plants. And so, like that one over there, you see a little garden, a whole forest of varied plants underneath it, all thriving on the stuff that the bigger tree has dropped. And the garden extends just to the limits of the branches of the Pahutakawa and no further. Well, as you look around the island, you can see what a difference it's made. In many cases, it's just black rock covered with lichen. In other places, nearby, where the conditions are better, there are real forests growing. On the basalt, there are small plants, sparse vegetation, and average-sized Christmas trees. But underneath this area, something very interesting happened hundreds of years ago when the lava was flowing. The lava pushed under the ancient seabed, forcing it upwards. And if you look around here, you now see a forest of a very different kind. Many lush ferns, lots of flowering plants, and the Christmas trees are absolutely enormous. All of this because the ancient seabed 
formed a much richer soil. And that's why back here on the volcano's rim, things are looking so good. Because all this sinter, this dust and volcanic ash, is holding a fair bit of moisture. And it's releasing nutrients into the plants that have got a foothold here. Now the volcano only stopped smoking about ooh, two or three hundred years ago. And so the plants have had to do all this in that short amount of time. And nobody really knows if this is the end point or just a stage in succession, a stage of plant takeover. But of course, if Rangitoto isn't truly extinct, the entire volcano story may start all over again. Curiosity.